Hello everyone and welcome back to Cloudfall Zoo. Remember last episode when I said we're going to show off the reptile park in the next episode of Cloudfall Zoo? We're going to show off good little snakes like this one and nice little crocs like these ones. Well, yeah, that might have lied. Uh, yeah, the, the reptile house is coming, I promise. There'll be an episode probably within the next week of me uploading this. I think like everything's almost built in that and I'm really happy with it. I just gotta to do some signs because there's some uh, black billboards in there and I need I need to finish up the signs. I've been putting that off but even if I don't get those done by next week I will upload something so. But yeah anyway this week what I'm doing in Cloudfall Zoo is showing off these animals instead. We're gonna show off some carnivores you know like like some lions or some some wild dogs as well as some smaller animals but uh yeah these by the way are just some signs I did advertising outside the zoo put them on the bins and yeah little thing for lions for the wild dogs that just arrived and then of course the reptile park which like I said we'll show next week also in my ZSU press room in case you're new to this this is like the first episode of Cloudfall Zoo you're watching in which case hi why why you didn't watch the first two episodes first but uh yeah cloudfall zoo is a zsu project if you don't know what zsu is it's you know zoo, zoo role playing thing you trade your animals with other people i explained it better in the first video but yeah, you should go you should go check it out if you haven't already there'll be a link in the description there's been some big updates since the last time i posted and some big updates to come so yeah do recommend checking it out but anyway like I said, I'm not going to show off the reptile area today. Today we're going to show off some exhibits mainly for carnivorans, but also some other ones some that I've made over time. And yeah, mostly low budget stuff because I want to get the, the low budget stuff out of my system. I've had some ideas for a while and I really wanted to build it, so just get that done. And then in the future we'll have fancy stuff. So actually it's better that I show off these exhibits before the reptile area because the Reptile Park is super fancy. The exhibits I'm going to show today are pretty low budget. But yeah, in the in the entrance area, I added in the uh, what you might call it, the stalls, if you will, the counters. Well, at least for the slush, the the info desk is still a big box because we don't have the counter yet. But once we do, I'm gonna put that in here as well. Yeah, it's cool that Frontier added these uh, counters, so now I don't have to use Eben's boxless shop mod. That's neat. Oh, is it? The TV broke. Who broke the TV? Oh. So, yeah, start off with our tour. Let's head in this direction. Just hop into Tejikam quickly. Let's also unpause so, you know, we've got some movement going around. Yeah, we come this way. You know, we, we've seen all of this before. The bathrooms, the uh, Pornball aviary, the Eagle aviary. We've also got a few new aviaries, some small little, you know, basic aviaries. And uh, I got some for owls. So, yeah, a spotted eagle owl, which you might remember was in the back of old lion house. There's some new animals there. We'll check them in a bit. Yeah, they, it's moved over here. We've got a little barn owl. Which is hiding somewhere in the back there. And this last one's empty, and then we also got our small scarlet macaws. Also, I, I dig these new little, little signs. Because the signs I made before, like uh, like this one over here, that one's good, but it's still for, the, for these small enclosures. It feels, that one even feels too big. So, yeah, these tiny signs, I really dig them. Yeah, and this one, I. Took the dividing wall out, made it into one big enclosure, and boom, we got two big old scarlet macaws in here. And this last one's for some rosy faced lovebirds, which I mean, I, I couldn't find any models for them, or I don't think there is, so you just have to imagine them. Yeah, the scarlet macaws are by Druck, by the way. If you're interested in any of the blueprints I'm using, my own as well as other people's, then uh, yeah, I have a big old collection. On the Steam Workshop, you can check the description. You know, and check the back side of them. See, just some simple doors you can go inside. 
the cages. Okay. Same thing, yeah. Yeah. And as you can see, I put up a lot more vegetation here. If you are in a wheelchair, unfortunately, you are gonna have to back around here, but this is a bit steep, so I had to put some stairs. If you look in the back there, you might see some new new enclosures and stuff that we're gonna check out later. I also put ostriches with these uh the springbok and the earlant that was in here. Got some ostriches now. That's the female. And there's the male. So yeah, before we go and see all that new stuff back there, we're gonna go see what's in the, the line house now actually. Let's, let's take the long route. We can go see some of these birds, because I don't believe I've shown what's in here now. I don't think I have, but yeah, we've got some African spoonbills and some Scarlet Ivers. I'm not sure who made the... I think the spoonbill, the Bongo made a, uh, a Eurasian spoonbill and I just modified it so it looks like a African spoonbill, but it is 2D, so if you come from the side it's just... Oh, it disappears. But from there it's fine. I think the Scarlet Ivers was also made by Bongo. Yeah, I just checked the Scarlet Ivers was also made by Bongo Hardwood and that's that's a mod. Any of the mods you see today, you can check in the description. But yeah, so they in this little aviary uh, got a nice little pond for them. And we can walk along this path. Here we have our uh, our pheasants, which we always yeah, and then also add some violet back starling in the enclosure, but again. No models for violet back starling, so we're gonna have to imagine them. The pheasants are just a recoloring of one of Drak's pheasants. I think the golden one I just recolored so it looks silver. Come over here. The goats are boxed because uh, their mod hasn't been updated just yet. But uh, yeah, let's come along this way. So at the back here, before you might remember, there was a howl in one cage and then caracals in the other. But they've all gone. We saw where the owl was. The caracals, we'll see where it's later, but... Right now we got some, uh... Raccoons. We're all boxed up. In this cage. As you can see, I added some glass here. Just so you don't have that obstructed view with the bars. Because if you have the bars here, you know, people might try and get close and the animals might attack. But with glass, you can get close and it's safer. And it's less obstructed. Yeah, so we've got a little raccoons in this one. Got some here. Yeah. Now they can they can utilize all the climbing stuff the caracals did. And they can go inside. The raccoon mod hasn't been updated as you can tell, which is why this dude is floating. All weird like. But yeah. And in this cage where the owl was, we got some ringtail coati. So Labor something made a um a white nose Kowati mod, and I just recolored it so it looked like a ring tailed or South American Kowati. Yeah, pretty much the same enclosure, I just added this little climbing thing here. Yeah. And also, I had like a little roost up there for the owl, but there's no owl anymore. And the inside of the enclosure is now. Yeah, it's now theirs. Before, this used to be the goat's night room, but now the Kowatis can come in here. And the goats have been relegated to these smaller night rooms over here, which isn't as big, but they can still sleep in here, it's still fine. In that right, Mr. Goat. Fortunately, the hitboxes are weird, so they can't actually go out. I'm gonna show you traversable area. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move these out manually, and it's because they keep getting boxed and keep getting stuck inside. But hopefully, the mod will get updated soon. Uh, the raccoon mod was made by a plastic fork, by the way, in case you're wondering. And the goats were made by J... J2 Bex. Keep on forgetting the name. But anyway, let's move on. In the distance you can see the reptile park, which I promised we'd show this episode, but we aren't. You can also see some other weird stuff, ignore that, that's for the far future. You can come along here, we have a red river hog enclosure, which still doesn't have a red river hog in it. 
uh, a warthog replacement store. Like I said last episode, you can close off this fence, the um, part of the enclosure, divide into two, which I did here. So the second part is supposed to hold Patagonian Maras. But uh, there's no mod for them, so you're just gonna have to imagine the Maras in there. And we walk along here and see some new stuff in the background, including some unfinished buildings like this one. That'll be done next episode, but uh, let's let's look at what's in the foreground. We got some. Uh, well, this is the cattle pen. We've seen this already. What I did was I um, fenced off a little bit of it and put a net over it, and we have an Avery, a makeshift Avery for our yellow bull stalk. So, yeah. credits to Haribo for making this Avery, the the mesh set which I just used for this. Yeah, we've got a little stalk Avery, we put a little pond in here, put some branches and trees and a shade structure and boom. Perfect. This is kind of based on Johannesburg Zoo's, one of their wattle crane Averys, where they just took a part of the hoofstock yard and threw a net over it, fenced it up a bit, and boom, wattle crane space. So in this case, it's yellow bull stalk. You will also notice there's a path cutting through here. So, yeah, before these, in these two enclosures were right next to each other, I just put a path in here so we can get to the new area. And this is the Barbary Sheep enclosure, but they've also added some emus. Yeah, both two are modded animals. I'm not sure who made them. If they, they'll be in the description for the modded animals. And yeah. Come along this way, we've got a big cage to our left, and we also got a few smaller cages to our right. Oh yeah, one let I'm just, I gotta do backtracking, I forgot. I forgot to show off some something. I've been working on the backdrop for the zoo a little bit, so as you can see there's a whole bunch of trees here now. And I also put in the building. So yeah, this is all this is based on the real life UCT which is right next to the uh the actual plot of land I'm building this on, so I'm going to be building part of the University of Cape Town, just to act as a backdrop, so we made this building here, this parking lot, still got a lot more to do, add some buildings here, and if you look far in the back you can see it's still, still got to add stuff there, it's very bare, but slowly but surely that will get built up. And yeah, so let's carry on this way and we come to uh, our pumas or just a puma we have one puma and this enclosure it's not really based on anything I saw like an enclosure with this kind of shape on Google images and but I changed the side the uh, design to more low budget materials so like just iron chain link and then some bricks in the back we've got a puma here I don't know why he's just standing here. He can he can reverse quite a bit of the space. He got some climbing structures. Check on this side. We also got the got the night room for the puma. Which yeah, I mean simple, just some hay. Puma can come sleep in. I had to put these branches down so the puma can actually climb on these so he can get in the night room. One thing I like about this enclosure is that uh, it has a little viewpoint up at the top there. And the puma can actually go up there. Sometimes I caught the puma sleeping. And let's hop out of Tedrid Cam. i show you. Oops. Yeah. So the puma can climb up on these, flame, these frames and go up here. And yet it has a nice view of, uh, of everything. You can look at the city. Look at the cows, look at the stalks, the sheep, and just, yeah, everything around, which I think is cool. But for some reason, he's starting to just chill down here. That's fine. Gives the guests a nice close view, I guess. Over there, this building's part of a reptile enclosures or reptile park, so that's something for next episode. Here we are, we got a little hot dog squad van, which I'm pretending is a, a horse roll stand. So people come here and buy their horse rolls. 
We've also got a little seating area over here. And we've got some steps and we've got the big steps you can sit on. So there's like a bench and some tables. Umbrellas if you want to shade yourself. Oh yeah. I like how this turned out. This is that's more reptile area stuff in the background if you're getting peeks off, but and over here we got our Hamadryas baboon exhibit. Uh, signs I still need to do. I I couldn't find a decent picture of a baboon that I have. I'm sure I have one somewhere, but I need to find it. And I'll do those signs. But anyway, we got the mandal sitting in for the baboon because there's no mods or baboons in the game, so yeah, mandals here temporarily, just so I can make sure everything works. And he can traverse this quite nicely, actually. As you can see. Climb all the way on top of these rocks and move them there. And go inside his night room, which we'll check in a bit. And on all these trees and whatnot. So yeah, this exhibit is based on one I saw at Mystic Monkeys and Feathers, which is a small little zoo in South Africa. And yeah, they have a similar Hammer Drive Baboon exhibit. I'll put a picture on screen. Yeah, I'm not going to turn around because that's going to spoil some exhibits of the reptile area, or at least one exhibit. I kind of sneak peeked it a bit. So there you go. Now we're going to look at the baboon exhibit. Big old cage aviary type thing. I really like how this turns out. Very artificial, but still. I like it. We've got the little keeper gate, double gate for keepers to go in. Then we've got the backstage over here. And he can come in and use this. We've got the small little gate if you want to put the mandal in, or the big gate for the staff. An old door. I imagine this is like a little motorized panel to close and open it. And just to show you that he can come in. We've got the little branches to climb in, and then the mandal can actually come inside here. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get baboons eventually. I can put Hamadrai's baboons actually in here, but uh, for now the mandal's the, place, the placeholder. Yeah. Let's actually see how it comes outside. I'm really impressed as to how the animals can move around in all these rocks. It's really cool. I only did more, he just usually just sits there. Oh no, there's doing a bit of a run around. Probably gonna play with the box. Yeah, I like that. Also like how the this exhibit you can see from afar. So like when you're coming into this area, you'd be like, ooh, there's a big cage there, I wonder what's in there. Oh. And even from down here you can see it, so Yeah, you can see it a bit and you can see that cage as well. You might even see the puma standing on top there and be like, ooh. I think that's a cool view. You can see the puma sitting up there. But the puma just stands down here. Sure. Yeah. Let's move the puma up there. Yeah, that's a cool view. See the puma standing on top. Alright, let's hop back into Desert Camp. So, yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of backtracking and uh, come this way instead, where we have our follow deer, a European or common follow deer, just in the small little pen next to the Owdad and Emu. Yeah, they're just they're just, they're just they're just chilling here, not doing much. We've got a little shelter back there. Nothing much to say about this enclosure, it's just a chain link square or rectangle with some plants in and deer. And over here we got some more carnivorans. So we got our little serval over here, you can see it there. This is a mod so it'll be in the description. And then as I said before we had caracals, they were back there, but now they are over here. Here's a little caracal pair. So these enclosures over here, we've got four of them. We'll see the other two in a bit. 
they're based on ones you have at Giraffe House, which is also a small little zoo, I think in Cape Town as well. And they got enclosures set up like this, where you just have an open air enclosure for servals and caracals. And they just have the electric wire and the little mesh overhang to stop the cats from escaping. Yeah, and I didn't really like that design. I was like, ooh, that's like a nice low budget design. I want to build that. So, yeah, we got that here. And yeah, because this was built on uh, steep terrain, because this entire zoo is built on the side of a mountain, we all got this little, got this nice little slope, which is annoying to build with, because this enclosure would be really easy to build with, you know? You just put up the posts put up the mesh and that and it's all straight and you pull it across but because this is all slopey terrain and terrain moves around you and have to, have to add all these angles to the wires and stuff and it takes so long fortunately with these enclosures I could just I made this one and I kind of copy pasted it and just changed the terrain a little bit made a few tweaks to it and it kind of worked so but yeah the terrain bit of a nuisance but it, it it adds more, you know, it, make, it makes the zoo feel nice and more realistic. Because IRL, you're not going to have flat terrain. And with a big carnivore enclosures, you're going to see that again. The terrain was a bit of a hassle to work with. It made, it made things difficult for an enclosure that would otherwise be cheap and easy. And uh, yeah, each enclosure has a simple night room. The animal can come in, just some hay, a staff gate. A little wait to open and close the, the guillotine door. Yeah. Anyway, let's go check off the other animals. So, yeah, caracal. Let's see over here. Got just two little climbing frames and some plants. And over here we have our Eurasian lynx, which is somewhere. Take a peek inside. There it is. Just sitting at the back. Why don't you come up to the front, buddy? Links. That's cool. Then if we come over here, we have a fully implied exhibit. We have the African Civet. There's no mod for them and I don't think anyone has made a gutter piece item or animal for them, so yeah, this is implied, but you know, they got the log, they can climb up here and that. Similar setup as the others, if you come back here and check all the night rooms, all the night rooms are the same, essentially. I'll also put this top on the outside, because uh, that's what giraffe house has, and also I think it's just to stop the animals from seeing each other. Especially these lower ones, so if the caracal sees the, the serval, they might get a little upset, get a little aggro. But yeah, now we can come up and we can see the big, the big animals. First off, we'll start with our wild dogs. They're just chilling nicely up here for us. Like I said, this is where the wires became annoying again because. Yeah, I had to angle all of these differently to get the wires right. And with the lines, which had even more electric wires, which we'll see in a bit, it was even more annoying. But, uh, yeah, I got it to work in the end. I'm really happy with the result. So, yeah, it's really just a simple closure. Got some, like, electric wire there just to stop them from climbing, I guess. Just a simple overhang because they are canids. They don't really climb a lot some other animals that I'll show later they or like the cats over here they're, they're climbing animals so you have a little bit more protection like this overhang and the more wires but yeah on this side between these two enclosures we'll see what's in this one in a bit this side you go with a little fancy um, I guess concrete wall just in case in the future I want to have guests come up here but I don't think these are these low budget en enclosures will last for very long. I just wanted to get it out of my system, build them all, but in the future, I'm gonna build more fancy enclosures on top of this hill, and I think like fancier stuff will be easier to build. Because having like this electric wire with the mesh against it's just just tough. 
I mean on the slope, if it was just flat, the flat terrain would be really easy to build, but I decided to build my zoo on a mountainside, so yeah, I have to live with those consequences. It's got the little drinky area over here for them, this is the keeper gate, this is their night room. It's based on some I saw at the Lion and Safari Park. So yeah, you've got these two little rooms for the animals. You can divide them if you want. Got this little lever thing to close the, the door. And we got these uh, sliding doors to let the animals in or out, or the staff in or out. And a little uh, thing, a little slidey thing you can open so you can look at the animals or throw in some meat if they're hungry and yeah I'm actually I really like how these night rooms turned out again they capture that nice low budget vibe that I wanted that's that's the wild dog enclosure and you'll see the other ones are quite similar the wild dogs are a nice little shade structure for them next one we got is for our grey wolves specifically timber wolves so we've got a pair of males in here. We can find them. Ah, oh, there's one right at the back. Where's the other one? I'm not sure where the other one is. Yeah. Okay, by the way, the wild dogs can actually go inside the enclosure because I measured it right, but then I copied, uh, not the enclosure, the night room. And then I copied it over here. And the wolves unfortunately can't fit in there, but uh, I can't be bothered fixing that. Where's the other wolf? Where's your, where's your brother? Oh, puppy's sleeping. But uh, yeah, the wolf enclosure was built in this little... Uh, I'm not sure what to call it. little cluster of trees, stone pines, that we're in, that's in the zoo, so... Kept that in the cage and the wolves can run between the trees. And yeah, I got this uh, little wooden barrier here. It's just a visual barrier because I feel like their neighbors might just stress out the wolves or confuse the wolves. And their neighbors are the lions, which are all the way at the back there, hard to see. But yeah, we've got the lions too. So yeah, now we've got the big famous zoo animal, the one everyone comes to the zoo to see. And as you can see here, you can see in this, this fence why the electric wiring was higher because yeah, I got a few more layers because lions are climbers and their neighbors on that side also, which we'll check in a bit, also climbers, but yeah. Got the lions over here, they got a nice little climbing frame, they can come sit up here, watch over the, the zoo, look at the guests, look up the mountain. I still need to do. I need to add the back of the the more of the mountain up there. But yeah, very simple enclosure for the lions. Just some plants. Their night room. Lions also can't put in their night room, which is annoying. But it's one of those things. Yeah, we only got a pair: a tawny male and a white female. I also want to show you what I did here for the water. Is that I put the little tap on the outside, and it looked like. You have this little bath here, and the water pours into the, the line enclosure, so the lions can come and drink out of this. And yeah, for the back area for the wolves and lions, I had to carve away a little bit of the hill slope because it was too steep, so I'm not sure if I'll fix this later once I build new enclosures here. No fancy enclosures, but for now this is what it is. It's very rough back here. The backstage path to get to these enclosures, the backstage for these animals, but uh, it is what it is. Not focusing too much on the back side of this, it's more the front end. So, yeah, this by the way is the path that comes from the, the baboon enclosure. You have to come this way. Baboons come here. On the other side of this fence, again, there's an enclosure from the reptile area. If you're in the ZSU and check my press room, you might see what it is, or see a lot of the new stuff, but uh, 
Otherwise, you can wait for the episode, which I promise will be soon. But the cool thing I like the, uh, with this uh, whole retaining wall against this path, I did the... I used the new, the European rustic stone pieces. I just put like a little, it's like a makeshift stone wall type thing, which I've seen in some places. And I really like how this turned out, so I'm going to use this more in the future. That was like a retaining wall. Anyway, you might be wondering what a last animal is, and you can see it right here. Right against the fence where everyone can see is our Eurasian brown bear. Of course, there isn't a Eurasian brown bear in game, so it's a grizzly bear, but for ZSU purposes, it's Eurasian brown. Also, I do have the, uh, uh, what's it called? I completely forgot what the mod is called, the, the free build mod. So that's how I got these fences right up close to the path. The free world mod, if you don't have it, I don't know why it's really useful. Just try it out. It makes working with paths and fences and water so much easier in this game. But yeah, we got a brown bear. This is a pretty simple enclosure. Again, similar setup with the lines, you got the electric wire there. I made the enclosure a little bit taller. Because in ZSU lore, this, this bear has a bit of history of being an escape artist, so took the extra precautions. Yeah, but this enclosure is kind of based on some black bear enclosures from a small little South African zoo called Eventeria Wildlife Park. Yeah, they got just the mesh and the electric fence. And the night room is kind of based on what they have. You can see it's a bit of a different design to the lions and wild dogs and wolves. It's just a, a single room. Let me let me take the path like a normal person that can't just face through walls. Come back here. We've got an angry archer. Yeah, it's just a single room. Whoa, and I'm stuck on the roof. Grand. Yeah, but we can stick out of Tejit Cam. Yeah, so we got our little lever to open and close the uh, the gate. It's not right now. It's closed, so maybe start for cleaning. We've got the door we can open, We've got the little slidey thing so we can chuck in meat and just look at the animal, see how she's doing. Start gate over here. Yeah, not a, like like all the other con conivorants. It's a pretty simple setup. It's got a little uh, climbing structure. I think I can pop. There, I've got a little tire thing, and I put the a tree in the middle. So, I don't know if the bear can actually use the tire now that the tree is in there, but I like the aesthetic. Oh, she's just sitting there. That's cool. You can also climb to the top here and get a nice viewpoint of everything. And then also a little dirty pool, a small little pool. And the bear can actually come in this pool and swim around for a bit, splash a bit. In the future, all these animals will get uh, fancier enclosures, some of them bigger enclosures. But for now, I wanted to get the. I want to build the low budget stuff because I realize, you know, that's what ZSU was, or oh, and UCZ before it, you built like. You start off small zoo type thing, get the small zoo vibes, low budget, and then you build into bigger budgets. So I wanted to get the, the low budget stuff done first. Let's get it, get it built. And I think I got it, achieved it well with this. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this all turned out. And I hope you enjoyed all of that too. And I think that's all we have to show for this episode. I can fly around for a bit just to show you the overviews of everything. You know, some bird's eye views of these enclosures. But yeah, that's all I got to show for today. Sorry again that there's no reptile area this episode, next episode for sure. Also, Plantain Zoo, um, it, it, it's coming. I've got some stuff, I'm just building backstage and I don't like building backstage so it's taking long but e eventually we'll have Plantain Zoo. Uh, I, I don't know when, but I, uh, I, mean, I, can, I can promise that there'll be Cloudfall Zoo episodes soon. So. But anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon in the next Cloudfall Zoo episode where we will finally be going into 
this place. Bye.